that the United States stands with Israel, we will not ever fail to have their back. We'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need and they can continue to defend themselves. You know, the world's seen appalling images. Thousands of rockets in a space of hours raining down on Israeli cities. When I got up this morning and started this at 7.30, 8 o'clock, my calls, Hamas terrorists crossing in Israel, killing not only Israeli soldiers, but Israeli civilians. In the street, in their homes, innocent people murdered, wounded, entire families taken hostage by Hamas. Just days after Israel marked the holiest of days in the Jewish calendar. It's unconscionable. You know, when I spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu this morning, I told him the United States stands with the people of Israel in the face of these terrorist assaults. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people, full stop. There's never justification for terrorist attacks. And my administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. Let me say this as clearly as I can. This is not a moment for any party hostile to Israel to exploit these attacks to seek advantage. The world is watching. I've also been in contact with the King of Jordan, spoken with members of Congress, directed my national security team to engage with their Israeli counterparts, military to military, intelligence to intelligence, dipl diplomat to diplomat, to make sure Israel has what it needs. I've also directed my team to remain in constant contact with leaders throughout the region, including Egypt, Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Oman, the UAE, as well as our European partners and the Palestinian Authority. It's also a terrible tragedy on a human level. It's hurting innocent people, seeing the lives that have been broken by this, the families torn apart. It's heartbreaking. And Jill and I are praying for those families who have been impacted by this violence. We grieve with those who have lost their loved ones, lost a piece of their soul. We have hope for a swift recovery for many who have been wounded. But we're going to remain in close touch with Prime Minister. I personally am going to remain in close contact with Prime Minister Netanyahu as this situation continues to develop. And let there be no mistake, the United States stands with the state of Israel, just as we have from the moment the United States became the first nation to recognize Israel 11 minutes after its founding 75 years ago. As a crisis between Israel and the Hamas get to the fourth day, a lot of things have been ongoing. A lot of people have been affected on both sides. And before we start, let me just make this very clear. I am against violence. I don't care the situation. I am against violence. And I categorically and wholeheartedly condemn Hamas for what they did. This was unnecessary. This barbaric act on the people of Israel was unnecessary and unjustifiable. Nothing they say can ever justify it. And if Israel have their way to pinpoint the Hamas and pick all of them and punish them according to international laws, they should do so. They have the clear okay to do so. And secondly, I believe that indiscriminate bombardment of buildings in Gaza would not solve the problem. This would only lead to more casualties from the Palestinian side. And I have heard many people say that Hamas is using the people of Palestine as shield. They are using them as a defensive mechanism, which I think that the people in Gaza did not choose to be involved in all this. These are just people who are going by with their lives. These are just people who want to live their life the best way they could. These are just people whose only crime is to be born in an area where no one listens to no one. That is their only crime. Hamas is out there committing atrocities. The Israeli forces are also there 
bumping things and buildings and stuff in Gaza. And the Palestinian people, the Palestinian children, the ordinary people have been caught in the middle. This is really sad. And my heart really goes out to them because I cannot comprehend their suffering. I cannot really say I, can, I, I know how much they are suffering because I have never been in such a situation. So I really cannot say how much suffering they are going through. But all I can say is that I hope and I wish that this issue can be resolved in a more peaceful way. That even though Hamas has carried out this horrifying act, there can still be some peace in the Middle East. So let's go to this article uh, and let's see what it says. So the headline reads, Gaza soon without fuel, medicine and food, Israel authorities. That, that Gaza will soon be without no food, no medicine, and no fuel. Israel authorities have placed a blockade on the area. And let me say this. If the whole point of Israel is to punish the entire Palestinian people, I think this is wrong. Because United Nations law on war said uh, collective punishment is against the law. You cannot punish people collectively for a crime committed by a few people. So having this siege in place and stopping these people from getting basic needs like medicine and food is totally wrong in my own opinion. And I believe by international law is wrong. So Israel should not be doing this. No matter what Hamas have done to them, they cannot starve the Palestinian people. They cannot deprive the Palestinians from medication. Let's continue. Gaza Strip could be on the brink of a new humanitarian crisis if supplies are not allowed in, authorities said. As Israel responds to the Hamas attacks, on Monday, Israel declared a complete siege on the territory, saying electricity, food, fuel, and water would be cut off. According to residents, aid has not reached the enclave since Saturday. BBC footage shows deserted streets covered with rubble from collapsed buildings following Israeli airstrikes. Nearly 700 people have died in these attacks and thousands more are reported to have been injured. The area is home to about 2.3 million people in total, 80% of whom rely on humanitarian aid, mainly due to the ongoing hostilities with Israel. It is ruled by Hamas militants, but Israel controls the airspace and its shoreline. It also restricts who and what goods can cross its border. Neighboring Egypt strictly controls what or who can pass through its borders with Gaza too. Since the attacks began on Saturday morning, Israel has stopped all supplies entering Gaza, including food and medicine. Spokesman of the United Nations Secretary General said more than a dozen healthcare workers had been killed or injured and at least seven medical centers have been damaged. Meanwhile, many people are currently without electricity and internet and could soon be out of essential food and water supplies. Damage to water, sanitation, and hygiene facilities has undermined services to more than 400,000 people. The Gaza power plant is now the only source of electricity and could run out of fuel within days. 
He added that the World Food Program was already distributing food for up to 100,000 internally displaced Palestinians and that those efforts would increase it food in the coming days. Even before the latest restrictions, residents of Gaza already face widespread food insecurity, restrictions on movement and water shortages. A spokeswoman of the United Nations Palestinian Refugee Agency told the BBC people in Gaza were terrified by the current situation and worried for their safety, as well as that of their children and families. This is really terrible. You can see from this article that the Palestinians were already under a siege. If they couldn't get stuff into their city, except the stuff that Israel allowed or Egypt allowed, that was technically a siege. So I don't understand why people would say that the Palestinians are to be blamed for all this. Hamas is to be blamed, but you have to understand that Israel has also been pushing these people to the wall. Like I said before, it takes two to tangle, okay? Now, we might blame Palestine for all we want, or we might blame Hamas, which they deserve it. Hamas deserves the blame they get, and Hamas deserves to be punished severely for what they have done. But let's not forget that as we are trying to punish Hamas, as Israel is trying to punish Hamas, they too will be held accountable if they commit any human rights violation. They also will be held responsible if they indiscriminately killed people in Gaza. So everyone should pay close attention. People should not just neglect what Israel is doing in Gaza. Everyone should be paying close attention. The fact that Hamas has committed this horrifying crime against the people of Israel does not justify Israel eliminating every single Palestinian. It does not justify Israel bombarding Gaza and killing innocent people. If Israel kills innocent people, Israel must be held to account. There shouldn't be two separate rules. There have to be one rule for everyone, and everyone must respect that rule. But you guys out there, what is your take on all this issue that is ongoing? And what do you think can be the solution to it? Let us know in the comment section below. Like always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.